Hi guys, it's Nicole and it's the first of the month. This is when I host a hop here on YouTube with a bunch of crafty friends and we are all working with the Creating with Sketches e-class sketchbook bundle. I can't quite remember exactly what it's called, but it is through Scrapbook Generation. I will provide a link down below. There will also be links to all of the channels participating this month. Some months people can't participate, so they take a pass. Everybody just kind of hops in when they can. This sketch bundle has 10 core sketches, so with this being October 1st, this is our final version of this hop. If you are just finding any of us, or this is your first kind of encounter with this hop, lucky for you, you've got nine months of prior inspiration providing. So just be sure to hit the show more for everybody's description boxes and you can find all kinds of information that we are all sharing. So I hope that during this hop you are finding new inspiration, maybe people that you've never encountered on your scrappy content viewing before. That's always my hope with these hops is that everybody that is participating can kind of grow a little bit and viewers can find new inspiration to them. Now, as far as the sketch goes, we are doing two page number five. So if you have this content, you can refer to that. I am loosely kind of going off of option number seven but at this point, I didn't know that. I thought for sure I was going to go off of, I want to say it was 10, where I was like, oh, you know what? I'm doing Christmas. That'll be a really easy opportunity to kind of pick a collection that has a lot of embellishments and do like a big scene. Um, somewhere along the way, and I'm not really sure, I ended up changing my mind. This was a very much one of those sort of creative sessions where I knew I needed to get this done because it had a deadline. I also prepped this last November when I was planning everything. So I didn't want to look up new photos just because I wasn't in the mood to do these. Like there, there's nothing wrong with them. I think it's, I'm very much not in a creative phase. Like my brain is kind of focused on some other stuff going on in my crafty world so to me this felt a little bit less like fun and a little bit more like work and that always kind of just slows me down a little bit and kind of depletes my decision making if you caught my live you got like a good look behind the scenes of some of like how long it can kind of take me to make decisions I do think with a live I had like that pressure of you got to move quickly. You got to pick something. Whereas a video like this, I took out a, you know, a good section of the clip where I was going through all of the papers. A lot of times I leave that in there just so that you guys can kind of see not necessarily how much junk I have, but just how many times I kind of go back and forth on trying to make a decision. Sometimes I know immediately I want to use a certain collection. Sometimes I just know things like in this instance, Christmas, all my stuff's mixed together. That's how I like it. Same thing with Halloween. And I think like baby stuff are like the only three sort of like themes that I just kind of consolidate everything. So starting out, I thought a hundred percent, I was going to use a completely different collection. However, I kept coming back to this clause and company from simple stories. I think I just had more options with this one. And then I was not liking the cream background paper that I originally picked. Like to me, it's, you know, it's, it's whiter cream and then start layering on top of it. I have this green, it's super old, simple stories, like their snap basics that they used to have. I got it from Tuesday morning. So I have like a full pack of this green, like linen pattern paper. So only because I have so many of them, I felt like, you know what? I'm going to use this green paper as my background. So I'll switch that up here in, in a little bit. At this point, I'm still just kind of getting a loose idea. I still think I'm going to be building a scene underneath my photos in that like big open area that's on the sketch. I have not changed my mind yet. <laughs> 
I think it was about the time I came across this like circle page that I was like, mm, those are cute, like keep moving. At this point, I'm still trying to figure out pattern papers and colors that I like and that make sense to me. And because I'm not finding things that make sense to me is where my brain is immediately bouncing around to like other ideas. And I had the sketch options open to my side and I saw the one with all the circles and I was like, you know what? I don't know why, but the circles are kind of calling to me. Like, let's punch a couple test circles and like lay everything out and kind of see how I feel when I have as like a large, let's call this a kit, like all of my Christmas stuff, I would consider just a giant kit of Christmas supplies. That is a lot of stuff. So I don't feel like I'm being wasteful when I'm punching a bunch of circles to do a test run because I'm not gonna use these specific circles on this layout. These are way too big. I will come to find out soon. I, it, This is something that I can easily just tuck in with some of the die cut packs and move it into like the box that has the embellishments. I have a box with all the paper and a box with all of my Christmas embellishments. This stuff will get used at some point. It'll get die cut out even smaller. It'll get tucked behind something. Like it might end up in the trash. I'm okay with that. This is just kind of me very badly explaining when I, when I meet these roadblocks of I don't like what I'm picking and I don't like how things are looking. How do I work through that? And a lot of times, like in this instance, I'm pretty sure I walked away for a little bit, went and did some housework, came back. And if what I'm picking is not working, it's not clicking, it's not feeling right in my brain, then I just keep basically touching other paper. I keep pulling different stuff and slowly kind of working my way through the different choices. I found more of those snap basic papers in my closet and I just kind of pulled out some of the reds and the greens. I felt like this was a better option than some of the patterns that I was looking at. So I'm going to map my photos in this red that I found. I'm going to check my circles and see how my spacing is. If I used this larger size, I would cut them in half and have them kind of jump the margin. So at this point, this is this is working, this is great. I'm gonna use this larger circle punch that I have. I'm not even concerned about the fact that I've cut some circles out of this wood grain paper with the glitter, like joy element on there because that's where my extra photos are gonna go. So at that point, I thought that I liked the white wood grain and the more I looked at it, the more I just, it didn't, it didn't feel right. Look at me going through all these papers, like what feels right. <laughs> Eventually I'm going to settle on this dark wood grain. This is where my math is going to start to go wrong because here I'm measuring the space based off of these circles. And this is one of those sketches that you kind of do need to pay attention to the size of things across the entire 24 inches because I'm over here measuring stuff on the right hand page completely forgetting that I have a photo over on the left that drops down into sort of that second level of interest elements I don't know what word I'm trying to look for that is a four by four photo so this bottom section should at the bare minimum be four inches tall and I've cut it to five and a half I have not quite figured that out yet I'm over here like yep this is great page two is satisfactory like let, let's keep going it's when I come over here and I start putting the left hand side together that I realize that there was some math on the left that I ignored and it's fine I I try to leave in math mistakes and stuff so that you guys can kind of see Sometimes when I'm looking at sketches and I'm changing them, I'm forgetting to make sure if a specific sized element is in the area that I am modifying. So in this instance, there's a picture of my kids playing in the street with a rocket, and that is a 4x4 four four photo. That 4x4 four four photo is sort of indicating the sizing for that whole row. But I forgot about that. And at this point, it's still not clicking. Um, 
I'm just going ahead and <laughs> getting this to match up. I, it's not going to make sense to you guys, but that little snowman paper, I'm not using it for that pre-printed element on it. In fact, I'm actually going to rotate it because the sizing was just a little bit off. I just looked through the 4x4 four four cut apart cards for one that I liked the outer edge of the pattern on it. And it was that plaid paper that kind of comes into play later when I do the circles. That's going to get covered up with some more paper layers and my journaling and I don't I'm not real concerned with that at this point. That was probably the easiest section of the layout. So it's around this point when I'm making sure to cut everything so that it lines up in the middle, everything's symmetrical going from left to right, and then I go to put my photo on there and I'm like saying a lot of, a lot of words, a lot of adjectives. And at first I was like, okay, maybe I can just kind of fill this gap in with some pattern paper. And then I was like, you know what, this is almost a six by four, like maybe I'll get a six by four card and like fill it in or have it go from like the square all the way down across this extra, nothing, nothing was working. So I'm pretty sure I took like another mental break in here because I was like, okay, yeah, this, this needs to be four and a quarter, not five and a half. And when I cut it small here and bring in those circles and I'm like these don't look as cute with only two rows like these these are too big so <laughs> I go back through everything that I've pulled out and I'm like let me look at everything again let me get a smaller circle punch I I punch circles with some paper from my trash and I'm gonna kind of do a dry run with these now three of them is not gonna fit perfectly in this four and a quarter space. Could I have gone and gotten a smaller punch? Yes, but they fit really well horizontally. So I'm just gonna end up cutting the tops of these circles off and kind of have them look like they're running into the margin between the photos and this like design area. I would rather cut off the tops than the bottoms. That's just a personal preference. Um, the variation that I was also going off of is one of the few that removes the center element, which again, if you have this sketch, you know what I'm talking about. Like this one has, most of the variations have this center line or center like shelf of repeating embellishments between the photo area and the pattern paper area. The circle variation kind of eliminates that, so I'm just going to kind of mix some of the different variations and some of my original concept of building a scene and bring that sort of shelf back in, which you'll see after I, after I get going on getting everything down. I did end up chewing up that whole background paper, but again, it didn't bother me because I have a whole pack of this paper. So thankfully that was the choice that I had made for my background papers. Otherwise I would have had to get, get my surgical tools out and be like really careful about it. Now I'm going to pull out a ruler and my pencil and I'm just going to make the lines where I want to do some stitching. I decided that I wanted to do some like corner stitching but it's not gonna be symmetrical. Some sides are shorter, some sides are longer. This is just a way for me to bring some more interest to that big kind of empty green area without bringing in more paper or embellishments. Like I just want something subtle. And again, something to kind of like frame everything. So I'm just gonna do some stitching in the corners, which I think you might be able to pick it up on camera. So I left this in real time so you guys can see that I am a slow hole poker. I've been using this wooden one that Lisa Brooks recommended to me on Amazon. It's okay. It's not my favorite. I have small hands and sucky hand strength, so my little chubby one feels better in my hand, but I can't find that one, and it's probably about... It. Like, I can't find it to recommend it to you guys, and it's about to break anyway, so it, it was time to get a new one. I just make sure to take breaks because the skinny size of that one makes my hand cramp. You know, 
stitcher issues, I guess. So I took this downstairs. I did red stitching on the red pattern paper and then the green stitching in the corners. And I'm gonna come in and start punching a bunch of circles. I punched it from a lot of these like little cut apart squares from the pattern papers. I just kind of looked for different areas that had like small printing, small details. I pulled out the six by six pad because the patterns on that are gonna be a little bit smaller. They're also gonna include different B-sides than what came in the 12 inch collection. And when you've got a lot of like really busy circles like this that all have like phrases or Santa's face or the mistletoe, I personally like to break that up with more subtle patterns because then those subtle patterns give me somewhere to come back and add interest with either stitching or stickers, that kind of thing. And not a lot of rhyme or reason to how I arrange things. I just kind of start building this weird puzzle and try to have like a good mix of colors, pattern sizes, almost like you're playing Sudoku where, you know, I don't want to have all the plaid in the same row or the same column. I want to make sure I'm spreading stuff out. An easy way to do it is to come up with a repeating pattern but I don't know, sometimes I have more fun when it's just kind of like this. And then I did start leaving some openings to have um, stitched circles on the actual background. It's at this point that I'm realizing I probably should have edited this video to be much shorter because I feel like if I <laughs> am losing interest explaining it to you guys, you guys are probably already hopped to the next video, but I don't know. I get a lot of different responses in my comments about, you know, oh, I like when people leave this in. I prefer when people cut this out. It's, it's always, it's always different. So I don't know. I feel like I try to leave a lot of my decision making stuff in because I don't film things like stitching and like more tedious stuff because I don't know, I think that would just be boring to watch me stitch a bunch of circles, so I tend to not record that, and I take it downstairs and stitch while I watch TV or YouTube. So I did keep kind of just going back through everything that I had pulled out. I think I was checking a lot of the sticker sheets for any circles. I kept making sure that that little string of light bulbs that I originally wanted to use um, was still going to work. And then I will say this, I've done a lot of these sketches that have these repeating small shapes, whether it's triangles, squares, hexagons, circles have to be the most forgiving of all of them. I started out like making sure that they were all lined up at the bottom and trying to make sure they were all lined up at the side. Eventually, I just kind of checked my ruler to the side because to me, the circles are easy enough to kind of eyeball the distance between the edges of everything and even if they're not perfect just the nature of a bunch of circles sitting next to each other your eye just kind of assumes that they're straight anyways so I almost made a note to myself like the next time I come across one of those like triangle backgrounds I need to like slap myself and be like no don't do it do circles instead so we'll see this point we have jumped the timeline i'm quickly just kind of showing you guys i print my journaling out and i mark the edges basically i'm marking where the printing like the edges of where my printing is so that i can i don't need to see the text to line up this tag i only need to see those lines and make sure that those lines are centered on the pre-printed area of that tag so I've covered this a ton in videos. I think I even have a really old one where I showed you guys how to do this using the monitor on your computer. Um, I will not be linking that because it is like embarrassingly old. <laughs> so if, if you find it on your own, congratulations. <laughs> I did start layering some pattern papers over there. I brought in some of that wood grain that I had punched circles out of. I tried to 
keep like the patterns that I had already used as the choices that I was making for other areas. And then I did make sure to measure the string of lights has like two swoops and then a big swoop. And so I made sure that where I was going to cut it was going to meet in the middle and it wasn't going to look weird. And so that big swoop is going to go on the right. And then I'm just going to line up my photos to where they're going to cover the end of it. And you'll never know that that sticker doesn't go all the way through. When I was measuring the sticker was kind of the point where I was like, oh, it looks weird. It needs some sort of an edge. And I, I could not pick a color. And when I can't pick a color, my go-to is to pick a metallic. So I grabbed my six by six gold paper pad and just cut some, about probably like, I don't know, quarter of an inch strips. We're going to ignore my giant head. And I just kind of used these as a divider. Um, I did cover up part of my son's head and his forehead. I was like, dang it, whatever. We're, we've, we're too far. <laughs> like I could, I probably could have pulled the photo up, trimmed the bottom, scooted it down, but I feel like there's a part in, in a layout process where there's sort of like no take backsies and you're just, you're just committed. Whatever the end result is based on your choices, you got to own them. So <laughs> It's fine. His forehead is depicted in the other photos. He it's not like he lost his forehead. It's just not 100% visible on that specific photo. So, this is where most people say is their favorite part. They like the embellishing phase. I don't. Um I think paper and photos is probably my favorite part. I think for me that with embellishments there's just too many options and I don't know there's just too many things going on but this is one of my favorite methods to embellishing is being able to just add a bunch of random stuff to a repeated shaped background like this because the phrases don't really matter I'm kind of more just looking at color and the basic phrase and it's an opportunity to use up some stuff that I probably wouldn't normally pick. Um, I was really excited to see that I had the little set of cardstock stickers. Now they make them a lot thinner. These were good. These were still thick. And they were a smaller size circle that fit perfectly within my like little stitch circle. So I was able to use two of those. And I just kind of started looking through everything and I'm just, I'm looking for things that are more basic and not a lot of detail or interest to them because most of the circles themselves have a lot of like printed interest and stuff. And I do like to have like the phrase stickers kind of overlap a couple different circles, just kind of have everything feel more friendly, I guess I would say. And I never know when enough is enough. I think I just reach a point where I'm tired of looking through things and I'm not finding anything that I'm like, ooh, I like that. And that's kind of the sign to myself to say, it's probably done. There's probably enough stuff on here. It's probably time to move on. And it's just now occurring to me that I... I didn't do a title for this page. I don't feel like it really needs a title. This would be like the end of our Christmas celebration. So I just grabbed, I found a pack of enamel dots that matched this collection. And so I just grabbed these cream ones. I feel like I haven't used enamel dots in forever. And I was struggling trying to figure out where to put these things. The w random ones that I stuck at the top was when I realized I was like, there is nothing up here. You can't just have dots. So I stuck a label sticker up there and I was like, it's good enough. <laughs> That's usually the, the indicator to me to say it's done. I don't know how I didn't realize that I, I didn't do a title, but I don't necessarily think it needs a title. I think there's a lot of words and phrases going on already. So good enough. So just as a reminder, this is part of a hop. 
links down below, a couple suggested videos here as well. If you haven't subscribed already, I'd love you to join me on my little chaotic journey and I'll catch you guys later.